Well, hey, good evening to you. I got some thunder rolling in the distance. Uh, I was gonna hunt a little later, uh, but I'm gonna try to get one in before it rains. Uh, doing a little squirrel hunting today. And we're also going through the book of Matthew. Now, uh, first I'll talk about the squirrel hunt. Uh, I'm just gonna keep this real simple. Uh, lately I've had a lot of luck and, and thanks for the tips, by the way, if you got any tips on any of these hunts, cause we'll be going through the book of Matthew verse by verse for years, years. Um, fall, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer. So, um, as we hunt different things, uh, any sort of tips you might have, definitely throw them in below. Today I'm going to be using my Typhoon 12. Absolutely love this shotgun in Missouri. You're only allowed to have a firearm with two rounds. So I have a two round magazine on it. Um, and a Mosin Nagant sling. A lot of people ask about that sling. That's the Mosin Nagant sling. Um, I've also gotten some glasses that I have a camera on. I'm trying to improve the hunts for you, uh, especially when you look at it through iron sights. It's sometimes hard to tell uh, what's actually happening. So hopefully this adding this camera will evolve over the next year or so, uh, get better at filming these hunts as well. Uh, where we are in the book of Matthew is, um, it's we're going through the genealogy and it's broken up into threes, three generations of 14. And we're in that last generation that's from captivity in Babylon to Jesus Christ. And what we're seeing is is the last video, um, Jeconiah, he was let off in a captivity at eight years old uh, with Daniel. Uh, he was summoned by Nebuchadnezzar to come there. And his son, there's very few records of him but what we do know about him is pretty fascinating so we're going to focus on him today he was born in captivity and for all we know um, remaining you know never left so um, we're going to focus on him today uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into some woods real close to where i'm at now so i'm kind of talking here and not walking a uh, little patch of woods that i've seen some squirrels jumping around in before and I'm just going to stand there like a tree. Again, thanks for the tip. That's helped really well. I'm just going to stand there, be still, kind of like I'm deer hunting, uh, for a little over an hour, uh, or until it rains, or until I get something. Um, and I'll be filming it the whole time. I won't make you watch me just sit there and stand for an hour. I'll, I'll shorten that part out quite a bit. But uh, And then we'll get into Matthew. So uh, this is incredibly important. I strongly believe that the church is to many degrees ignorant to the teachings of Jesus Christ. And it is the best way to truly understand what it is Jesus taught us is to go through his life verse by verse and fully study out every single word. And that's what we're doing. That's why we have so many episodes. I, I don't even know how many episodes it is. We're on chapter one, verse 11, something like that. So um, just fascinating. To analyze every word is gonna be an amazing journey. God has me hunting and fishing on this journey. Not fully sure why. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with just being in nature um, I think it has to do with hunting is a very bloody thing. Um, and we're talking about the blood of Jesus Christ and this, that's what it was all about. So that's kind of where I think we're doing it this way, but it's the way he told me to do it. So that's how we're going to do it.
All right, well, right when I walked up, as soon as I walked up, there was something stirring in the woods over there. Um, about 100% sure it was a squirrel, but I just sat there and I can keep hearing it. And then eventually I just didn't hear it anymore. I never saw it. Uh, and then I stood here for about an hour. So now we're gonna go to Matthew. <laughs> um, I haven't heard anything. I can hear something kind of rustling over there, but uh, the storm's getting a little closer. Wind's picking up. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the book of Matthew real quick. Um, I do believe, I'm learning that the more, when I read the word of God in nature, that it calls nature out. Uh, so I kind of have this theory that it does that thing, that nature loves the word of God and it comes to it. Um, I also have a rule of something I'm hunting comes out while I'm reading the Word of God. I'm not going to shoot it. Seems wrong to come out to hear the Word of God and you get blown away. So again, we're in Matthew, and and it's it's really fascinating because, um, well, we'll just pick it up where we left off. I'm going to go to Matthew one, starting verse twelve. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Shealtiel, and Shealtiel begot Zerubbabel. All right, Shield Teal is who we're going to focus on today, because uh, Jeconiah, his father, he was led off to Babylon at eight years old, um, which is what we studied out yesterday, that at eight years old, he was placed as the king by uh, the king of Babylon, said, now you're king now, and then dragged his father off in bronze fetters. And literally, he just became king. And it says he was wicked in the eyes of the Lord, which I, I struggle to understand how an eight-year-old can be that wicked, but I'm sure it had to do with the temple. Um, there's a bunch of squirrels right there. Hold on. I, I hope you can see that on camera. They're right on that tree, fighting with each other. Isn't that fascinating? Like as soon as we started talking about Jesus I and mean, the Lord. So, um, right, like, isn't that beautiful? I'll keep these kind of rolling just in case. That was cool. I hope you can, I hope we can see that on the camera. I'll zoom in, I'll try to edit it to where you can see that. That's neat. Cause I've been standing here for like, I didn't see nothing. Like I heard something over here and I could hear kind of something over here for, you know, every now and then for about an hour. And then just as soon as I read the word of God, there they are. There they are. It's awesome. I love that stuff. All right, we'll see if we can bring some more. So Shiltiel is led off into captivity at eight years old and they put his uncle in charge. And there's really not a lot about him. Mostly what we know about him or anytime his name is mentioned in the Bible is because of in Ezra, his father, Zerub, or his son, who was born in captivity, uh, because Shiltiel, his father was eight years old when he went into captivity. So he clearly was born in captivity um, and then potentially died in captivity. It doesn't really say. Uh, I mean, maybe I missed something. I dug as deep as I could, and it's the first time I've ever studied out Shield Teal. Uh, if you know, let me know. But as far as I know, the next mention of him is when they were released and they begin to build the temple in Jerusalem. It is his son, Zerubbabel, and they refer to him as the son of Shield Teal. Um, and that's really the only mention of him, is he's born in captivity, potentially dies in captivity, um, you know, because he would have been born and where he definitely would have been in his 50s, 60s, potentially 70s in captivity. Um, I just love that. There's, an, there's another squirrel over there. Oh, it's turkeys. There must be like six or seven of them.
The turkey's like the word of God too, man. That is so cool. That is so cool. So cool. Well, let's keep reading the word of God. Let's see what else comes out, man. This is awesome. So Shiltil is born in captivity. Um, his father was only eight years old when he went into captivity. Um, so I think really a good way to kind of see, well, what was his life like is to um, really kind of take a look at Daniel, at least the first part uh, that kind of just references this whole process. Uh, we're going to go to Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, that was his grandfather, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. There's some sort of helicopter coming. Turkey season, September 15th. Mm, that is some good, that's a good sign right there. That is a really good sign. There was a bunch of turkeys there. I think I'll stand here when I go turkey hunting. They were just right there. I think the camera makes it look farther than it actually is. They're still there. They like the word of God. They like it. I don't blame them. All right, uh, Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried away into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the articles in the treasure house of his God. Then the king instructed Espenaz, the master of the eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men, in whom there was no blemish, but good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understanding, who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. So Shiltil's father was eight years old and he was clearly part of this because it says in Chronicles that, the, that Nebuchadnezzar summoned him and then he was just gone, that was it. So clearly, because it says the king's ancestors, uh, king's descendants, I mean, uh, some of the nobles, that would have been the king. That's probably why they put him as king for just a few months. He was eight years old, Nebuchadnezzar made him king of Judah three months and 10 days later, he summons him and, and that's it. Um, but he'll, here Shiltiel is born in all this. So what would have happened to his father is kind of like Daniel. He would have become kind of this noble person. He would have been involved in things with the, key, the king. He would have learned the language of the Chaldeans. He would have learned all the, th the ways of uh, the Babylonians. And that just would have been who who his father was and that would have been who he was um this was like you know if you look at what daniel went through it's years and years of training and schooling and education and working in different positions throughout the kingdom uh, and high 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 held positions um daniel himself just being right by the king there and that's what his father would have been and that certainly he would if he was born into that it's almost like being born into royal servancy if that makes sense um which is what he you know he wasn't born into some sort of slavery and he just was well i mean it was slavery but it was palace slaves so to say um but even uh daniel you know he had heavy influence over the kingdom and, you know, as, you know, kind of really one of the right-hand guys of, of King Nebuchadnezzar. And so those positions would have been available. Those types of positions were, would be positions for Israelites. And Shiltil, being the son of a king, would have certainly been in one of those positions when he was born. He just would have been born and just raised in the ways of the Chaldeans. But somehow... Somehow his son, Zerubbabel, somehow Zerubbabel plays a huge role in the rebuilding the temple in Israel. So somehow that Jewish tradition would have stayed somehow. Because if we go to Ezra, it says this in 3.1. When the seventh month had come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one man to Jerusalem. Then Joshua the son of Zazadak, 
and his brethren, the priest, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren, arose and built the altar of God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. So here, you know, so picture this. You got this man. Well, I guess at one point he's a baby. He's born in captivity. Like his father was eight years old when he got sent off into captivity as the king of Judah. And so about probably a decade after his father was sent there and I'm sure schooled into the language and the arts of the Chaldeans and servancy to the king, um, he's born. He's born and he's born into this royalty, so to say, as some sort of servant to the king. Definitely going to school to learn the language and the arts of the Chaldeans. <laughs> um, and then grows up and then he has a child, Zerubbabel, and somehow that child is influenced to go build the temple. I mean, that's how, how's that play out? Uh, we're all the product of our environment, but I think it's really a testimony to when God wants you to do something. He's going to, he's going to work in through you. He's going to work to you and through you and show you these ways. Um, to where at some point you're just like, Oh, I got to go do these things of God. I got to be the hands and feet of my Lord, uh, which is exactly what Zerubbabel was his son. So. Um, there you go. Um, continue to join me. That was awesome. I knew it. I knew it. There is proof. And I got it on film that the word of God brings out. Like I stood here for an hour and I think it was turkeys I heard over there because I kept hearing something over there, but I never saw anything. Um, and then as soon as I started reading the word of God, there's two squirrels. I can hear them still. Barking. And then all of a sudden I get, go back to reading and here comes some turkeys. I love it. Love it. Love it. The word of God just brings out the nature. It's so beautiful. It really shows that his word is living. It is living. And all of his creation, all of it is part of this word, man. That's so cool. And they know it. They know it to be so. It's awesome. Just awesome. Well, hey, thanks for joining me. Um, I think the thunder actually cleared up. I don't know if it's going to rain or not. Weather said no, but thunder sure said yes a little bit ago. Um, but that was cool, man. I'm really glad I saw that. I'm glad that somehow that didn't play out to where they came out when I was hunting and I blasted them. And I never would have seen that moment in time where as soon as I read the word of God, I just read one sentence and it's so-and-so we got so-and-so we got so-and-so and then there's squirrels was awesome <laughs> all right well hey man thanks again for joining me uh continue to join us uh we're going to keep on rolling through matthew um turkey season's coming uh right now at the filming of this um it's at the end of august so we've got about two more weeks and we got those turkeys bow, bow season but that'd be great be great can't wait <laughs>